February 24th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Leviticus chapter 13 from the Old Testament. The Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron. When someone has a swelling or a scab or a bright spot on the skin of his body that may become a diseased infection, he must be brought to Aaron the priest or one of his sons, the priest. The priest must then examine the infection on the skin of the body and if the hair in the infection has turned white and the infection appears to be deeper than the skin of the body, then it is a diseased infection. So when the priest examines it, he must pronounce the person unclean. If it is a white bright spot on the skin of his body, but it does not appear to be deeper than the skin and the hair has not turned white, then the priest is to quarantine the person with the infection for seven days. The priest must then examine it on the seventh day and, if as far as he can see the infection has stayed the same and has not spread on the skin, then the priest is to quarantine the person for another seven days. The priest must then examine it again on the seventh day and if the infection has faded and has not spread on the skin, then the priest is to pronounce the person clean. It is a scab, so he must wash his clothes and be clean. If, however, the scab is spreading further on the skin after he has shown himself to the priest for his purification, then he must show himself to the priest a second time. The priest must then examine it, and if the scab is spread on the skin, then the priest is to pronounce the person unclean. It is a disease. When someone has a diseased infection, he must be brought to the priest. The priest will then examine it, and if a white swelling is on the skin, it has turned the hair white, and there is raw flesh in the swelling, it is a chronic disease on the skin of his body, so the priest is to pronounce him unclean. The priest must not merely quarantine him, for he is unclean. If, however, the disease breaks out on the skin so that the disease covers all the skin of the person with the infection from his head to his feet, as far as the priest can see, the priest must then examine it. And if the disease covers his whole body, he is to pronounce the person with the infection clean. He is turned all white, so he is clean. But whenever raw flesh appears in it, he will be unclean. So the priest is to examine the raw flesh and pronounce him unclean. It is diseased. If, however, the raw flesh once again turns white, then he must come to the priest. The priest will then examine it, and if the infection has turned white, the priest is to pronounce the person with the infection clean. He is clean. When someone's body has a boil on its skin and it heals, and in the place of the boil there is a white swelling or a reddish white bright spot, he must show himself to the priest. The priest will then examine it, and if it appears to be deeper than the skin and its hair has turned white, then the priest is to pronounce the person unclean. It is a diseased infection that has broken out in the boil. If, however, the priest examines it and there is no white hair in it, it is not deeper than the skin, and it has faded, then the priest is to quarantine him for seven days. If it is spreading further on the skin, then the priest is to pronounce him unclean. It is an infection. But if the bright spot stays in its place and has not spread, it is a scar of the boil, so the priest is to pronounce him clean. When a body has a burn on its skin and the raw area of the burn becomes reddish white or white bright spot, the priest must examine it. And if the hair has turned white in the bright spot and it appears to be deeper than the skin, it is a disease that has broken out in the burn. The priest is to pronounce the person unclean. It is a diseased infection. If, however, the priest examines it and there's no white hair in the bright spot, it is not deeper than the skin and it has faded then the priest is to quarantine him for seven days. The priest must then examine it on the seventh day, and if it is spreading further on the skin, then the priest is to pronounce him unclean. It is a diseased infection. But if the bright spot stays in its place, has not spread on the skin, and it has faded, then it is the swelling of the burn. So the priest is to pronounce him clean, because it is the scar of the burn. When a man or a woman has an infection on the head or in the beard, the priest is to examine the infection, and if it appears to be deeper than the skin and the hair in it is reddish yellow and thin, then the priest is to pronounce the person unclean. It is skull, a disease of the head or the beard. But if the priest examines the skull infection and it does not appear to be deeper than the skin and there is no black hair in it, 
Then the priest is to quarantine the person with the skull infection for seven days. The priest must then examine the infection on the seventh day, and if the skull is not spread, there is no reddish-yellow hair in it, and the skull does not appear to be deeper than the skin. Then the individual is to shave himself, but he must not shave the area affected by the skull, and the priest is to quarantine the person with the skull for another seven days. The priest must then examine the skull on the seventh day, and if the skull has not spread on the skin and it does not appear to be deeper than the skin, then the priest is to pronounce him clean. So he is to wash his clothes and be clean. If, however, the skull spreads further on the skin after his purification, then the priest is to examine it, and if the skull has spread on the skin, the priest is not to search further for reddish-yellow hair. The person is unclean. If, as far as the priest can see, the skull has stayed the same and black hair has sprouted in it, the skull has been healed, the person is clean. So the priest is to pronounce him clean. When a man or a woman has bright spots, white bright spots on the skin of their body, the priest is to examine them, and if the bright spots on the skin of their body are faded white, it is a harmless rash that has broken out on the skin. The person is clean. When a man's head is bare so that he is balding in back, he is clean. If his head is bare on the forehead so that he is balding in front, he is clean. But if there is a reddish-white infection in the back or front bald area, it is a disease breaking out in his back or front bald area. The priest is to examine it, and if the swelling of the infection is reddish-white in the back or front bald area, like the appearance of a disease on the skin of the body, he is a diseased man. He is unclean. The priest must surely pronounce him unclean because of his infection on his head. As for the diseased person who has the infection, his clothes must be torn, the hair of his head must be unbound, he must cover his mustache, and he must call out, unclean, unclean. The whole time he has the infection, he will be continually unclean. He must live in isolation, and his place of residence must be outside the camp. When a garment has a diseased infection in it, whether a wool or a linen garment, or in the warp or wolf of the linen or the wool, or in leather or anything made of leather, if the infection in the garment or leather or warp or wolf of any article of leather is yellowish green or reddish, it is a diseased infection and it must be shown to the priest. The priest is to examine and then quarantine the article with the infection for seven days. He must then examine the infection on the seventh day. If the infection has spread in the garment, or in the warp, or in the woof, or in the leather, whatever the article into which the leather was made, the infection is a malignant disease. It is unclean. He must burn the garment, or the warp, or the woof, whether wool or linen, or any article of leather which has the infection in it. Because it is a malignant disease, it must be burned up in the fire. But if the priest examines it and the infection has not spread in the garment or in the warp or in the woof or in any article of leather, the priest is to command that they wash whatever has the infection and quarantine it for another seven days. The priest must then examine it after the infection has been washed out, and if the infection has not changed its appearance, even though the infection has not spread, it is unclean. You must burn it up in the fire. It is a fungus, whether on the back side or the front side of the article. But if the priest has examined it and the infection has faded after it has been washed, he is to tear it out of the garment or the leather or the warp or the woof. Then, if it still appears again in the garment or the warp or the woof or in any article of leather, it is an outbreak. Whatever has the infection in it, you must burn up in the fire. But the garment or the warp or the woof or any article of leather which you wash and infection disappears from it is to be washed a second time and it will be clean. This is the law of the diseased infection in the garment of wool or linen or the warp or the woof or any article of leather for pronouncing it clean or unclean. God, some of this... Some of this is going to sound a little bit odd to us, maybe because we don't have certain things like they did back then or, or process things in the same way. Um, or some of this is even going to seem legalistic in the seven days and quarantine and 14 days and you must do this and you can't do this. But the whole time I'm reading this, thinking about these processes for keeping 
healthy people in that community and having things not spread. I, I go back to <laughs> when I was little, my mom said, always said, wash your hands, wash your hands, wash your hands. And the reason she said that, besides at the time I thought she was just being nagging um, and driving me crazy. God, the reason that she said that is because she cared about me and she cared about me being healthy. Um, and she didn't want other people to catch anything and she didn't want me to catch anything from anybody else. She was doing it out of love for me. So as I read some of the parts of the Bible that sometimes were like, why are those even in there? How in the world can those things speak to me? How can they tell me more about my relationship with God? I think it speaks volumes about your relationship with us and to what great lengths you were willing to go to to protect your people and teach them how to be safe and um, how to work in communities together um, in a healthy way. Uh, how to not remove them from your love, but how to remove them so that they couldn't infect others and how to deal with various things. When I read this, these chapters about these rules and regulations, your love just pours out of it. So often we think of the God of the Old Testament as um, domineering and mean and powerful and very standoffish and I don't think you were at all, especially not from these passages. You were very intimate with them and, and you wanted them to be healthy and you wanted them to be able to take care of each other. There's an incredible amount of love in these passages from you. So God, I thank you for watching out for us, for taking care of us. Most of all, I thank you for loving us when we try and push you away, which in my case is often... <laughs> that you love us with unconditional love, that no matter how hard we try and push you away, you will still always be there right by our side, reminding us to wash our hands <laughs> and telling us to take care of ourselves because you have us here on earth for a purpose. We love you very much. In your son's name we pray. Amen.